Hey everybody, I'm Winter. Welcome to Winter Starcast, and thanks for chilling with me today. Today we have a game, a Terran vs. Zerg here on Frozen Temple, between two top tier players. This game is from Base Trade TV's Corsair Cup number 19. This is in the finals here. Uh, so the last two players remaining, a European and a Korean. Let's introduce, in the blue, our Terran player in the bottom right hand corner. It's going to be formerly of Team MVP. Uh, I believe he's on Africa uh, CS now. Doesn't have his clan tag at the moment, but he's out of Korea. His name is Keen. His opponent in the top left-hand corner, the Polish professional. It is a laser. I mean, I, the pronunciation, I've heard it both ways. Elazer, a laser. I like the sound of a laser. I'm going to stick with it. And he's doing something very interesting here to start in Terran vs. Zerg. Customarily, in a normal quote-unquote macro game, you see a uh, hatchery first. Every once in a while, though, and you will see that spawning pull. Something to point out, he doesn't have any gas. It doesn't look like he's really going to be saving up any larva. So this is more defensive than anything. Let's take a look at Frozen Temple and Terran vs. Zerg in general. One of the things standing out on this two-player map is this large ledge here that things like Reapers and Blink Stalkers can abuse. Of course, we're not going to see any Blink Stalkers here, more than likely, in Terran vs. Zerg. But I think this might just be a little bit of a preventative measure, measure, getting out your gas, getting out your potential speedlings early on to deflect any early Reapers. Keen, on the other hand, he doesn't have any additional barracks. He's going for two Reapers to start, so a little bit off the normal path here uh, for both players. But Keen looks like he wants to be a little bit aggressive, maybe bait out some extra Zerglings out of a laser. Uh, we'll see. I have to, have to see how much damage he gets done. It looks like he's going to have a second Reaper and probably make his reactor afterwards. No. Uh, actually opting for a Marine first. Eventually, he will be opting for more than likely a reactor as he's left some space here in his wall, and that's completely intentional. Now, the SCV does get in. He gets the vision to see that his opponent is going for a Roach Warren uh, and actually not starting to upgrade Zergling speed. This is... A, an incredible amount of information here for Keen to have early on. And it looks like, first blood, the Zergling will be taken down. And we see the Reaper picking up those early Zerglings that aren't going to have speed or anything early on. Taking down the rocks that do prevent uh, a convenient wall off here. I'm not sure if this was intentional. It annoys me when I'm playing my games. Uh, but he wants to get those rocks out of the way. The Reaper coming up. It will... Will it be able to pick off that creep tumor? Not quite. The queen deflecting the reaper from the main there. No drones to protect quite yet at the natural expansion. And the overlords are finding their way off to the sides. A laser with a pretty safe pathing, making sure they can't be easily picked off by any marines, of which there are a grand total of one right now, with two more on the way. He's actually building out of that reactor, respecting the fact that his opponent could be going for this ravager pressure. Now, something to point out, there are no overlords in position at the high ground here. So we can't use the Ravagers to shoot up to the high ground. This is just a bit of harass. He's going to be able to <laughs> probably take out this Reaper and force a pretty strong reaction that probably disrupts Keen's build order a bit. And as we see right now, a second bunker is on the way, completely unnecessary against this count. He's only going to have the three Ravagers uh, in total. So this is just a bit of pressure to keep him honest, to keep Keen honest. He's not looking to do any real damage with this, but Keen doesn't know if there are eight nine roaches and all these ravagers in front or if it's just these three so he has to respect it he's got the scvs repairing he's building a siege tank and a laser actually looks to be coming in with that overlord now that he has the ravagers in position and will be using that high ground vision to take out a reaper the reaper has been annoying so far but it looks like he's going to be able to get this supply depot the tank has sieged up the ravagers going a little bit too far here uh, and they will pay the iron price another mm, oh I didn't actually notice that. Those Ravager shots took out the Siege Tank. That's a pretty big deal. I didn't... That's actually great for a, la uh, a laser here. Did not realize that Siege Tank got taken out. That's a pretty big loss for Keen early on. It did cost a laser a couple Ravagers, but without that tank, he can't really reliably go out with a Medivac tank drop uh, and do damage. Now he's going to go out with one tank. He has a Medivac on the way to reinforce this, but it looks like... This is risky. This is risky. There's nothing at the watchtower, though, to scout it. So some damage could come out of Keen. Definitely a weird game so far. 
usually games start out with some speedlings, a transition into roaches, maybe a few queens. You don't usually see a dozen naked marines, okay, ten, uh, and a single tank walking across the map. But this is exactly what Keen is doing, very ambitious. And I think this ambition is going to pay off as there's only some queens, a ravager, and a roach right now to deal with this. Another overlord's going to go down. The creep spread is to this base. Will any Ravager shots? A single one forcing these units back and a good pullback by a laser, but the Medivac bringing with it its own payload of Marines is going to be able to put on a lot of pressure here. The tank shots tearing into the Queens. The splash damage washing all over. The Ravager will be targeted down. It looks like two more Queens are going to be coming out as well. The uh, tank easily microed back on the back of that Medivac. And we see a laser being able to defend this without too many losses, but we have to ask ourselves on both sides, at what cost? The worker count is dead even, but the third base has been completed for a laser. He has his lair finished. He hasn't yet started any upgrades, as I say it. 1-1 one, one in the production tab for ranged missile attacks to benefit those roaches and ravagers over on the side here. So a scan on the main base won't actually pick up that information. That could become relevant pretty soon. Keen has completed his third command center. Some more barracks are on the way. He's got several tanks. He knows he's probably going up against that Roach Ravager composition. And on this map especially, you, you pretty much need those tanks to hold these bases. Otherwise, the spread of the Roach Ravager, especially around this third base, can be incredibly strong. And oh, bit of a mistake there out of Keen. Uh, dropping down the tank, not paying attention, and a laser getting a couple lucky Ravager shots and will almost take out the medevac as well. So a, a couple good victories here against the early tanks for a laser. The worker count, he's been able to spiral forward with the drone count. And we see roach speed on the way. 1-1 one, one has now started. An overseer is going to come in and confirm the unit composition and whether or not, importantly, Keen has a third base, which he does. Uh, and this is the kind of information that a laser is looking to get. He needs to know, is his opponent expanding? Does he have the potential to attack, and what with? How much production is he following up with? Ideally, he would have seen these engineering bays to know that his opponent is going for upgrades, not some sort of all-in, but I think a laser is happy with the amount of information he got on this Terran base. Of course, he doesn't have the information that there's an attack. Oh, I like this with the uh, Marines to block this out. The Ravagers will deflect, but they can't actually kill these medevacs and tanks if they are well-controlled. They'll come down and clear out these handful of Marines, the tank's still doing what damage they can, but there's nothing really much to get uh, without risking the lives of these medevacs and these tanks. But you have them. There's no way to kill them. There's no mutas on the way. You can't go for a spire and get your upgrades alongside this Roach Ravager composition. I see a few more shots coming out. Should. Yeah, he forces out the lift. Uh, these Ravagers hurt pretty badly, but not badly enough. We see Burrow Move is on the way. Does he actually... A problem with Burrow move is if you don't get Burrow, it's pretty, pretty useless for those roaches. I don't know if this was intentional out of a laser. Uh, Burrow takes around the same amount of time as you can see here. Uh, you want to be getting that. He's going to have tunneling claws for non-Burrow roaches. So a pretty big mistake there out of a laser uh, that could come back to bite him because he's not investing in the hive tech. He's going for more roaches. If you're investing your resources in that mid-game tech, you need to have it all coming together as soon as possible because the longer this Terran army takes to build up, the more upgrades it gets, the more tanks that are produced, the stronger it becomes. And if you don't have Hive Tech, if you don't have Ultralisks or Broodlords or Vipers to counter it, uh, then you're going to be in a tough spot. These Roaches getting immediately propelled. A smart counterattack, but not going to find what it really wants. Will we take the shots out here on these tanks? No, not quite. There's the bro move. The Unicorn Roaches finishing up, but he's not going to be able to use them. We see him opening up the map, though. He needs to get oh, a big drop in the main while the units are out of position. Smartly done here by Keen, drawing that Zerg army back. And once again, we have to come back to the lack of transition here out of the laser. Keen at lower supply, but a laser can't attack into these siege tanks. He just doesn't have the tech without the burrow move. And now just realizing his roaches have that visual upgrade, but they don't have the actual ability. Now, Keen doesn't know they don't have burrow. He doesn't know. He's, he's lining up the turrets to make sure nothing can get by. He's already preparing because he also can see that visual upgrade on the roaches. 
So, a laser, what do you want to do here? He's about to hit his maximum strength. He's going to finish up 2-2. He's going to have 200 supply, but he's severely lacking in an infestation pit. And without that infestation pit, I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it, he doesn't have hive tech. He doesn't have a transition, so he has to go. The more time he spends, the less time he's going to have to do damage. Now we see him swinging around the right-hand side. Bunkers have been salvaged, actually. That could end up being a pretty big deal. And a laser, ooh, Keen, already on point, in position, ready to snipe off that hatchery. But will he be ready to deal with this Roach Ravager push? 2-2 is not finished for either player, so there's no upgrade advantage. He's trying to swing in. The tanks are in the air, and it looks like they're going to be joining the Marines and the Marauders on the ground momentarily. The Corrosive Vials have been exhausted for the first round. No real damage done, only superficial damage so far by a laser. He takes out a few Marines and Marauders, and he's going to have this second wave with 2-2 finishing. And now finally using the Burrow Roaches. Not all oh, while the scan is happening. Lie him to scan again. And there goes almost 20 supply instantaneously. The tanks are back in the air. The corrosive piles will be used. It will force him back. He's going to stim forward, take out a couple of the tanks with the corrosive piles with a laser. But these Marines and Marauders are coming through like a wrecking ball right now of bio. And the supplies will even up. We see a few Burrow Move Roaches making their way in, but the turrets will be enough detection to deflect them very strongly and oh he knows and he snaps up these roaches and ravagers almost instantaneously and what is there left once again we're gonna come back to it no infestation pit no hive tech is quickly equating to no hope here as we see burrow move roaches desperately coming out he missed the timing for those keen was already completely prepared he got nothing from it and that's gonna be a gg as a laser is forced to tap out and Keen strongly taken home this match. Thank you again, Base Trade, for that replay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first edition of Winter Starcast. Give me as much feedback as relevant and as possible. Uh, I want to do this more often. This is the very first one I cast on occasion on stream, but this is obviously something a bit different. So thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Press that like or dislike in this case button. Uh, subscribe and make sure to check me out live. Yeah, I went so far without that, but check me out live twitch.tv slash wintergaming. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck, have fun, and happy StarCrafting.